Hey, everyone. Um, that was my ding ding clock, as we call it, inviting us to a very, very special episode of Unicorn Chef. This is something that we threw together very, very last minute in response to the recent attacks on not just women's rights, but specifically body autonomy and also women's reproductive health. Um, we really thank everyone for joining us tonight. If you're new to the show, this is going to be a different format. We have a whole bunch of different guests who are going to come in and talk about why the different Supreme Court ruling is something that should really mobilize us all to action, whether that's with awareness, um, with our time, with fundraising, with a whole bunch of different reasons. Um, tonight, we're going to have a $1,500 match. So far, we've had a whole bunch of early donors, and we've already raised $750, which is something I'm incredibly proud of. Um, if you feel like giving us a match, we are really um, liberal, no pun intended, about what we're matching to. So we've matched to Planned Parenthood so far, the ACLU, different local organizations, and we have multiple people highlighting organizations in their local area that we'll be matching donations to. Um, if you have something that you think is a good candidate for this, let us know, and we're really happy to just give it a quick once over and send some funds and awareness that way. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start off uh, introducing our main chef tonight. Usually I cook along, but tonight I'm just going to MC uh, Keenan Skelly. So Keenan, did you want to talk about um, why we're here and what we're cooking and what we're doing tonight? Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby, baby, baby. So tonight, let's start off with what we're cooking and then I'll get a little bit of into some of the flavor of why we're all here today and why it's so important. Um, so if you've never made a Dutch baby before, and it's so, it's so coincidental that Chris is on here right when we're talking about the Dutch baby. I don't know. It's really interesting. Chris Kubeka is here too. We're going to get to her in a second, but a Dutch baby is possibly the most magnificent, easy thing that you will ever make in your entire life. You can make it sweet. You can make it savory. You can make it whatever the heck you want. So we did post the ingredients for tonight, and I'm renaming the Dutch baby for tonight. Sorry, I fixed it. Fixed it. <laughs> Continues, can you continue, Keenan? I renamed the Dutch baby for tonight, Jane Rose baby. It's soft and savory and it has really amazing things in it. And um, I think it's really important as we talk about some of these Supreme Court rulings, um, a lot of us here are in the cybersecurity space and privacy is something else that's really being kind of targeted here when we talk about Roe versus Wade, when we talk about some of the other Supreme Court decisions, even just a few minutes ago, I saw another one come through attacking kind of the entire line of privacy for American citizens, whether that is a woman, whether that is LGBTQ trans, uh, whether that is uh, Miranda rights, whether that is some basic fundamental things that we as Americans, as all Americans thought that were kind of set in stone. So tonight is not it is definitely about uh, reproductive rights, but it's not only about that. It's about the, the systematic taking down of all of these freedoms that we thought we were super, super like, um, you know, locked in stone and we didn't have to worry about anymore. Well, we do. So let's talk tonight about some local organizations, some national organizations. Um, and others that are really fighting this fight and trying to figure out ways to make sure that everybody here can keep their rights, can keep their safety, can keep their privacy. So, Caitlin, back to you. So, what we always start with on Unicorn Chef before we introduce, introduce Chris and talk about why this is important to her is what are we drinking tonight and what are we cooking? I have, this is my drink of the summer, a Topo Chico seltzer, delicious, refreshing. <laughs> so, and it won't get me too, too lit for this broadcast. Um, Keenan, what about you? What are you drinking and what are we cooking? I'm drinking um, Moe, Ice Imperial, which I always forget that I don't like this one, but I ordered a couple of different ones uh, a couple of uh, days ago for a pool party that I had with some lovely friends. And we had to overcome this, this demon neighbor that I found out that I have. And so we, we wanted to reward everybody up there with champagne. It's delightful. It's not my favorite, but it's okay. So if you can't celebrate the rollback of women's rights, which no one should because it's disgusting, uh, you can at least celebrate the fact that we are here trying to raise money for it and raise awareness. Um, and on that note, I wanted to introduce Chris Kubetska, um, who's our first pop-in guest. This is something new for us. We never have pop-in guests. Um, I want to say first off, thank you for being here and also huge thank you for actually staying awake because Chris has joined us from all the way across the globe to be on our, our broadcast and we appreciate that. Um, so tell us, why is this so important to you that you joined us from two o'clock in the morning <laughs> from your Airbnb? Tell us about that. 
Well, I, I think it has to do with a few things. Uh, one is religious freedoms. Now, um, not all religions have the same beliefs about uh, reproductive rights. Uh, since I work for the Middle East Institute, um, one of the concerns is many Muslims, um, this is not an issue. I mean, Saudi Arabia, you can have uh, reproductive rights. Uh, it's enshrined in the Muslim world, except for places like Afghanistan and the Taliban. There's very few Muslims that don't believe in it. Uh, so it actually affects religious freedom of other groups. And since I'm calling in from Tel Aviv, it also affects uh, the religious rights of Jewish people uh, and those that follow that religion. Uh, so it's very concerning. Another uh, big concern is the, for the economy of the United States. Uh, now, the uh, GCC, the wealthier countries in the Middle East, um, learned kind of the hard way when the uh, European Union general uh, data protection regulation came into place that they were losing business because uh, they didn't have privacy regulations and privacy protections. Um, the US uh, privacy shield has already been struck down by European Union courts. And how is this going to affect data sharing between both Middle East and Europe uh, if there are no fundamental privacy rights in the United States? Yes. It doesn't look good from a European or GCC uh, perspective from the Middle East and parts of Northern Africa. So it, it doesn't just affect our body autonomy, <clears throat> it also affects our economy. I'm really glad that you brought that up because I don't think, I think a lot of people view this as a one note issue. And I really like that you hit on the privacy angle and how this affects everyone in our country. Again, it affects our pocketbooks, which that should be something that's important to all of you, no matter where you sit on what side of the aisle. Um, so. To begin, Keenan, what are we going to be baking tonight? Tell us about that. Okay, Jane Rose Baby is delicious. And my riff on this particular Dutch baby is something that um, it, I, I kind of put together based on this amazing ristorante that was in South Africa, actually, when I lived there. This amazing, amazing Italian couple had um, moved to South Africa and they set up this little ristorante. And oh my God, they had the best pizza that I've ever had in my entire life. And I'm from Chicago. I'm from Chicago, okay? I mean, I'm from Detroit. Our pizza's probably better, but that's for another show. So, <laughs> Challenge accepted. So it was just so comforting and so wonderful to have this really amazing Italian pizza. But uh, the way that they made it, it was very achy. It was very like pancakey, which was different. It was something that I hadn't had before. So when I came back, I was playing with different types of uh, ways to make pizzas and um, get away from some of the dough issues that uh, I don't really like some pizza doughs unless they're super deep dish, uh, deep dish and filled with cheese, you know. Um, so I, I tried the idea of this Dutch baby, but I put all of my favorite pizza toppings on it. So that's why we have this random kind of like mess here of artichokes and olives and Gruyere. Who doesn't love Gruyere? Honestly. Love um, so when you eat this, it's going it, to, it's very savory. It's going to be a little bit eggy. It's perfect for a brunch. Actually, it's perfect for any time. I, I actually put out yesterday the one that I made as a test to make sure that my, my new electric oven, which is not as cool as my gas oven, uh, to make sure that it had no hiccups in it. And I devoured it like before the night was over. It was so tasty. It was absolutely delicious. So the great thing about uh, a Dutch baby and um, wh what we're calling tonight Jane Rose baby is that you can make it with anything. You can make it with savory stuff. You can make it with sweet stuff, anything you want. So the base that's here right now with the flour and the eggs and all that fun stuff, if you want to make it sweet, add a half a cup of sugar to it and maybe a little bit of vanilla extract and put berries in it. Put caramel in it. Put bananas and chocolate in it. Put whatever you want in it. It's going to taste amazing. And I think, too, just something to highlight with what you're cooking tonight, basically the only special equipment you need for this is a cast iron skillet, right? Good job. And technically, you don't really need that. You can do this in any baking dish. However, I highly recommend a, a superbly seasoned and miraculous iron skillet because it, it's just going to make it um, floofier. It's going to make it tastier. Um, all of the things that I've made in here for the last hundred years. Okay whatever, are, are, are still here and they taste great and they're gonna like infuse into our amazing uh, Dutch baby. All right, so did you wanna get started with the initial baking? I do. 
So okay. also, um, you know, Caitlin met, mentioned earlier that we're going to have a few guests coming through tonight. And I really appreciate Chris being here because the Netherlands uh, really has a, a wonderful outlook on everything. I kind of want to move there. She's trying to convince me to move there. And I think I kind of want to, because all of the things that they have in place for all the things that we're talking about, whether it's privacy, whether it's women's rights, whether it's LGBTQ, whether it's hacker rights, they just, they, they've kind of figured this stuff out. So I'm going to get started. Um, and while I'm doing this, I would love for Chris to talk about some of the amazing things uh, that they're doing. But first, you have the directions. Follow along. We're going to go ahead and put our egg and we're going to whisk it. And then we're going to put our flour and we're going to whisk it and we're going to put our cornstarch and we're going to whisk it and whisk, 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 whisk until I tell you to stop. Go. Yes. And so on that, Chris, if you want to take yourself off mute, I want to hear about some of the amazing things that you're doing and highlight some of the work you're doing. It sounds amazing. Well, uh, first, I'll, I'll give you a rundown a bit on the Netherlands, uh, per Keenan's request. Uh, some of the very interesting things about the Netherlands is it was the first country to enshrine the right for uh, same-sex marriage. Awesome. And I think that's uh, very fundamental uh, because, you know, people want to be happy. You have one life to live. Uh, it's as simple as that. <clears throat> uh, when it comes to reproductive rights, uh, they are very important uh, for uh, the Dutch population, whether it concerns uh, birth control, uh, basic sexual education to even know about your body, um, to abortion rights. And with that also is included uh, very uh, strong privacy rights. Now, one of the reasons why they believe in this so much is um, <clears throat> Going back in history, unfortunately, the Netherlands was invaded by the Nazis. And uh, Anne Frank's family, they were actually refugees from Germany trying to escape the war. And back in the day, <clears throat> when you lived in the Netherlands and registered, uh, it included information about your grandparents, your religion, and ethnicity. And when the Nazis rolled in after a three-day invasion, they were like, Ooh, now we know we can pinpoint people we want to kill. <clears throat> so they learned from that, uh, losing many, many, I think uh, over 90% of the Jewish population. Uh, so it, it was not a friendly thing. And from that, they're like, yeah, we, we kind of like their, our, our privacy. Yeah, because we know what can happen. Um, they also have, uh, I think it's 10 oh, or 11 years. God. Critical baking step. Oh, my God. Put... <laughs> Put your pan in your oven and set it to 425 degrees and get that pan hot, hot, hot. Okay, go ahead. Very important. Yes. All right. Uh, we have ethical hacker protection laws, uh, which basically say, hey, guess what? Um, if uh, you are a ethical hacker and you find a vulnerability and you can prove that it's exploitable as long as you follow a few simple rules, which are basically don't do super destructive testing. If you found a database, don't download the whole thing, just a little bit to show. Uh, always transmit the information in a secure manner so nobody else can come across that information or it can be intercepted. That companies of a certain size and or revenue must have a vulnerability disclosure program. And if you find uh, a vulnerability in a government system, they will reward you by giving you a T-shirt which says, I hacked the Dutch government and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. I've seen this. I love it. Uh, what, are you, what do you think are some targeted ways um, as far as policy that we can learn from the Netherlands and all these countries that are much more advanced from us as far as privacy protections and women's rights and all these different um, interconnected issues? Well, uh, take a look at the powerhouse that some of the countries that have things like equal rights for women in the Constitution and privacy and reproductive rights and <clears throat> what their GDP is in comparison to their population. Uh, the Netherlands is part of the you know, cool kids club that makes enough money to uh, do lots of different things. Uh, we're also the second largest food exporter in the world, and we have 17 and a half million people. Uh, and some of the most, if not the most advanced agriculture, which uh, much of it uses very little pesticides and things of that nature. 
because we have this weird thing called universal health care. Don't everybody gasp, right? Um, where, you know, the government's like, well, we don't want things that are going to harm our citizens because it actually costs all of us uh, money. So we should try to do things that, you know, don't poison us. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the U.S. has gone a different direction today by basically obliterating the EPA, um, which is a bit of a shame. Came out recently, too. Yeah. Yeah. Which definitely does not make for healthy babies um, in the United States uh, or healthy people. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, here's one of my questions. And I like this theme that you keep coming back to that at the end of the day, this is a economic argument. It doesn't matter about your religion or again, what how you vote. This is an economic argument that affects everyone's pocketbooks. So if you've never used this argument before or this kind of reasoning when you're discussing the issue of women's rights and body autonomy with people, um, what are some things that you would hit on? How would you encourage people to to bring this economic reasoning into these discussions? So the U.S. has uh, some great tech companies. They're really big. Uh, they're worth a lot of money. Um, I mean, you know, Apple's worth almost almost as much as Saudi Aramco uh, in Saudi Arabia. And the U.S. really risks losing its edge because countries will start developing their own tech. Uh, sometimes that might even include intellectual property theft. Uh, these things happen. Um, and start shifting towards that because they're not going to want to use U.S. tech and transmit data to the United States if there aren't, at the very least, the most basic privacy rights. Okay. How do they handle that? And you know, what kind of jobs and business opportunities and innovation are lost uh, as well as, you know, although, you know, big companies typically don't pay as much tax as, you know, you and me, but uh, there's still tax revenue. Uh, and also if we look kind of like the, at the supply chain, all the businesses that uh, feed into places like Facebook, uh, the cafes, the gasoline stations along the way, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we have to look at what those economic effects and what the chain reaction will be if uh, countries just go, nope, not going to happen. And then what about tourism? Uh, the yes. U.S. has a lot of tourist attractions. But uh, recently there was a case, I think it was last week, uh, there is one EU country that uh, is left that – basically says uh, for no reason almost whatsoever, uh, you can't have an abortion. And a lady uh, had a pregnancy, it's called Malta. Yep. Um, and I think there was a separation of the placenta and it wasn't viable and she could get sepsis. So, she was on a baby moon. so she was on a baby moon and found out that she didn't have a viable pregnancy. It's a horrible yeah. story, yes. Yeah, so she was airlifted to Spain. Now, how many European ladies or Muslim ladies or Jewish ladies visiting the United States um, are going to go, you know what, let's just give that a miss. There's Disneyland Paris. We don't need to go to Disney World or whatever it might be. Yes. Um, so, yeah, uh, loss of tourist dollars, uh, which, of course, will affect other things uh, like, you know, airline and and all of this kind of stuff. Uh, so if women who are near equal, if not equal consumers in uh, Europe and parts of the Middle East um, decide, no, it's not good. It's not a safe country for me to visit. What if I have a health problem? Um, I know uh, several ladies who have actually started contacting their uh, travel insurance over in Europe to oh. ask, you know, if something happens and I'm pregnant, uh, will you bring me back to my country in case there's complications while I'm visiting? And that's a huge, a huge industry too. how it would impact travel insurance. And also, too, if you have someone who you want to send overseas on a company trip to represent you and they're pregnant, they may not want to come here. Exactly. So I love that you talked about the travel uh, issue as well. But I really enjoyed that you were talking about that. Essentially, this is going to have an impact on our ability to com compete in a global marketplace. And that's going to affect all the different tech companies as well. Um, really quick, I see Keenan. Do you want to give us an update on where you are with our Dutch, our Dutch baby, our Jane Rose baby? 
Jane Rose baby is looking good. I am waiting for my new electric stove. It's electric to get up to 425 degrees. But what I've done is I've mixed all of the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients, including the flour, the cornstarch, the salt, the pepper, all into this lovely little floofy, bubbly looking thing right here. And it's so light and airy, it's, it's wonderful. Now I went ahead while you guys were talking and I served up and chopped up the savory and also the thyme, which I'm gonna sprinkle all over everything. So now I'm just waiting, I'm gonna wait. So you guys keep talking about the amazing things that the Netherlands is doing and how these Supreme Court decisions are really affecting America in the world view, not just here at home. And the one thing I want to do before we pass it back off to Chris is thank all of our viewers. Um, if I personally know you, um, I'm okay with you posting in the chat. If we don't personally know you, please send us a screenshot of your donation just so we can give it a quick once over. Uh, you can send it to whoever you're most comfortable with. Um, we work that way. But so a huge thank you to my wonderful, wonderful sister, who is also a woman in tech, uh, director of research for a agricultural development company, Amy, who gave $100. A huge shout out to Scott who is a Splunk wizard who I worked with, who's one of my favorite people for donating 60. Um, he is a wonderful, wonderful women's advocate and I love working with him. And then also to Bree, where are you Bree? Bree's in here somewhere, hold on. I'm scrolling. Bree, a hundred bucks, hell yeah, Bree. Bree is a wonderful friend of mine who is a vulnerability management wizard and a huge friend of us on Unicorn Chef. So thank you for donating as well. Um, and also to just anyone who wants to donate, it does not have to be a public donation. You are happy to, again, send us the screenshot and we just count you as a private donor and send you a thank you. So um, we really appreciate it. I think that brings us up to not, woo, $1,100, not, excuse me, $1,010, $1,010 right now. So that's awesome. And again, we're gonna match everything up to $1,500. So thank you everyone. And um, this will continue for 24 hours. So we did this before, uh, where we've had the charity and and let it go for a little bit because I know some people couldn't make it tonight, some people couldn't watch. But as always, the Unicorn Chef is available on YouTube. You can watch it later, and yeah. please uh, feel free to donate at any time when you're watching, not just during that 24 hours. Yes, and my wonderful. Before we bring on our next guest, and sorry, Chris, I'm gonna you're still gonna be able to talk about all the wonderful things that's go that are going on in Europe and how we can model our policy actions after that. Um, a huge thank you to Cole Gibson, my fantasy football brother, who I am going to smite in this upcoming season for $100. <laughs> we are now at $1,110 of our match. That's excellent. And we haven't even put that baby in the oven. So this is really exciting. And I'm going to bring on our next guest. And we're going to see how this works with all four. I've never had all four of the screens on before. Let's see. I love it. Yay! I was looking up how to get like a visa to live in Canada. I am so sorry. We were just discussing this and I'm excited. Yes, so we're, this is kind of one of the themes tonight is how this is gonna actually impact the economic viability of the United States. And so I would love to, let me introduce you and then I'm here, to, I wanna introduce your charities and have you touch on that and why it's important to you. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are not familiar with our next guest, this is Chloe, I'm gonna give it my best shot. Mastagi? Oh, yeah, you did good. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. And also to both of our guests, these are people who agreed to come on with like 48 hours notice. So that means a ton to us. Um, Chloe, did you want to talk about why you're here and why this is important to you? Yeah. Uh, well, one, I mean, just imagine waking up and then turning on the news and then being like, oh, wow, I'm losing my rights today. I mean, it's just yeah. like one of those things. It just happens, right? It just happens from time to time. You know, it's just 50 years of of a weird change suddenly. But the reason I'm here is because I completely believe it's a choice. It is a hard choice to make, too. It's not like anyone's like, I am for abortions. I want to get abortion. It's my backup plan. It's That's my birth control. No one's doing that. No one is at all. It is a rough, failures happen, you know, and we need to support one another. And, you know, one of the things that I did right away when the news came out was that I worked with one of our interns and um, also my co-founder. We have two interns that were helping create this doc, um, basically that provides all these resources. So if you go to weopentech.org, on the front page, there's a document there that's a couple pages long that has every single resource that you need to know about 
no matter what your gender is, there is a resource for you out there. It also talks about how to have privacy, your security, what organizations to go to, how to get funds, how to donate funds, how to be safe when looking up all this information, what are your rights at this time? Um, and so it's just like plenty of resources in there. And I really do hand it down to one of our interns. She did a phenomenal job on it. Um, but yeah, go to weopentech.org to take a look at this resource, send it to all your friends. Honestly, it's for like, it's for people that are non-binary, it's for trans, it's also for women, it's for anyone. So everyone feels a part of the conversation. And um, oh, please yeah, go, ahead. go for it. No, go for it. I was just going to say, it's really important to highlight that. And it's basically going to be the drumbeat of our evening that this impacts you. No matter who you are, no matter where you live, this impacts you. It impacts your family members. It impacts your friends. And this is not just a, a women's rights issue. This is an everyone issue. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is you also specifically highlighted one charity, um, Access Reproductive Justice. Yes. Did you want to talk about why they're special and why they're important to you? There's a link in the chat yeah. for anyone who would like to donate there. We're also still matching donations to this charity as well. Yeah, there are so many wonderful organizations, but I wanted to pick one that is you know close to where I live. So I live in California, and it's a great organization. If you're within California or you need to travel to California, they're there as a resource to help fun and connect with you. If you need emotional support, they also have that too. If you need to donate, you want to donate, it's a great place. But one of the things that I love about it is that they also, when you look at the donation, it's donate time or, or funds. Yes. So no matter what option that works for you, you can make a difference today with them. So, I mean, even if you don't have the funds to do it, you got time we have a holiday four day weekend and you know i don't know about you but baseball bats sound really nice and hitting something because of the anger that's within me right now of my rights being taken away so i mean why not channel that anger go ahead and volunteer your time and really help this organization and help connect people to the right resources that they need so then they don't have to deal with so much pain when already it's so stigmatized at this time Thank you. And we just put the link in the chat to anyone who would like to uh, donate to Access Reproductive Justice. We've been doing a really good job with our fundraising. And so we're only going to match for the next $400. But seriously, you should donate anyways, again, even if it's just your time. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, Chloe, um, Chris and I were talking about this earlier, about how to be a good advocate and explain to people that this is actually an everyone issue and that this is also an economic issue. So if you were talking to someone who didn't potentially realize how this affects everyone as a whole and how it can affect, affect everyone's pocketbooks, kind of how would you walk someone through that reasoning and why it's important? I think we first need to understand that the whole saying pro-life, I mean, everyone is pro-life, right? We don't want anyone to die. At the end of the day, we don't. <laughs> but that's the thing, right? But the thing is, is that by not having a choice, you're setting up for people to die. Literally, that's what's going to end up happening. You have ectopic pregnancies. People will die if they don't have an abortion. There are cases when you're pregnant where you need to have an abortion because it will put you at risk. These people can die. There is a great case that happened, in, and it's not a great case. It's a disgusting case to read, but it happened in Ireland. That was the case that changed the country to be like, you know what? We need an abortion rights now because we should never, ever put someone through that trauma, forcing someone to give birth against their will or forcing someone to get pregnant and carry that is actually a human rights violation. Even the UN has noted that it is a human rights violation. And the US right now is committing a human rights issue. So that's why it's important. We have to have those conversations. Just reiterate, it's not about, you know, when we talk about pro-life, pro-life is a choice. Everyone should have the choice and have that availability, especially if someone is dealing with like incest and rape. We're talking yes. about kids. It happens. One out of four kids are sexually assaulted. That means they also need support and help. When we stigmatize and we force kids to have babies at a, such a ridiculously young age, that is just beyond un ethical in my mind. 
Like I, the concept is just, I think that makes me even more angry. I'm going to look in Canada even more now. Thanks you guys. So I just want to, first of all, Chloe, yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and additionally, I want to add to that. You said something earlier that I thought was really important. And that is if you're as pissed off as we are about this and about the consequences that it has, let that, that rage drive you to action, not to stupidity, not to violence, not to rioting, not to those things. Drive yourself and drive your energy to action. I think that's really important right now. We have a long way to go on this road, action. So yes, also I wanted to say that I got a message from Nick, our friend Nick, faded Nick on Twitter, $60 to Planned Parenthood in North Carolina. Thank you, Nick. We are at 1170. I love it. I love it. And so again, we're matching everything dollar for dollar up to $1,500. So we are doing really good. Um, speaking of matching, this is something I really, I wanted to highlight actually. Um, the charity I wanted to highlight tonight was the National Network of Abortion Funds. Right now, I'm going to explain what they do in a second, but to cut to, again, people like, this is a big round fucking number. So they are, um, someone who's much richer than I am, they are going to be matching up to a million dollars of donations to this charity, which I'm going to explain to you in a minute, until July 2nd. So this is a really good place to donate because all donations up to a million dollars for the next couple of days will be donated or um, will be matched, excuse me. So the National Network of Abortion Funds, they're at abortionfunds.org, funds with an S. I'll drop the link in a second. Um, they consist of 80 organizations across the country, and they help to remove financial and logistical barriers to abortion access. Um, some of them do help directly pay for abortion. Some of them offer support such as transportation, childcare, doula services, things of that nature. And they also help women travel across state borders to get the reproductive health care that they need. Um, they, again, help bring and funnel funds to all these different 80 organizations, and they have a match for up to a million dollars for the next couple of days. So I'm going to drop the link in the chat. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, okay. a great yeah. place to put your money. So, And oh again, also your awareness. You guys, I just got a massive donation. Oh my God, Rowdy, 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 my boy. <laughs> You're my boy, Blue. Uh, $500 to the National Network of Abortion Funds. Thank you so much. That is huge. Wonderful. Yes. Thank Suchi. you. Uh, my friend Suchi, she just donated $100 to a vow. So oh my gosh. $100 in just a hot second. And thank you guys so much. This is so critical and so important for everyone, not just for women, but for everyone. Yes. Thank you so much to every single person who's donated e either their money or their time or just their social media platform for helping us raise funds. Um, this is how excited I am that I had a spreadsheet. I mean, I'm an instant response. So I had my spreadsheet and I had everything. And now I'm just sitting here just like like scribbling things. <laughs> so this is wonderful. We're at way over $1,500, which is wonderful. And I'm going to drop the link in there in a minute. So thank you. Love it. And I absolutely did, love it. Did you want to talk about a little bit more? I liked how we spoke in the beginning about how this affects, um, if you're in tech, this could affect your pocketbook and your paycheck at the end of the day, because companies that are worldwide may not want to do business with companies that are headquartered in the United States. If you could speak about that while I update the chat with some of them, thank yous and the link. I guess that question was for me. I was doing good with, that, with okay, feeling the questions until that one. That was, I was doing um, okay. That was for I, Chris and for Chloe, actually, or yeah. for anyone who wants to take it while I update it. Do you want to start or do you want me to go? <laughs> go ahead, Chloe. Oh, I mean, I've seen you drinking some, I, I'm assuming it's liquor. I, I only got water here. Do you want to, like, <laughs> I would. Okay, I'll time out, you guys, for a second, because Eric Berlardo also just donated yes. $100 to the Abortion Liberation Fund of Pennsylvania. Eric, thank you. You're a rock star. Eric's actually going to join us later and talk about being a male ally in this particular instance with Roe versus Wade, but also about the consequences that this poses to everything. Sorry, go ahead. I'm I would, excited to have you. Yeah. I would say like on that one, I would say a different thing that we should be more concerned about is, for example, all these companies that are saying we'll pay for your abortion and we'll do all that. I don't know if there are empty promises of PR. That's a concern I have because one, it's like, you know, if you're going through something like that, first of all, 
No one wants to share about it. And so going to your manager or to HR to tell, hey, I need funds to travel somewhere, you have to tell them why to receive those funds. And then you have to trust them that they won't tell anyone else internally. And that's something like, I don't know, it's kind of an invasion of privacy. So I think there has to be a way for them to do it without having to share that. But the thing is, you have to share that to receive the funds from what I've been reading. So that's a concern I have around privacy. I like what they're doing, but I also want to see thoughts around that as well when they make their PR announcements. And I don't think a lot of this, a lot of the PR announcements were well informed with the realities of what people are going through when they are going, making a decision like this. If I were to make a decision like that, the last person I would want to actually confide in would be my boss. I don't care how good your boss is. That's not your boss's business. This is a, a actual healthcare situation. I shouldn't have to go to my boss or my company and explain to them the specifics of my healthcare situation that I'm going through. So I, I highlight that for a second, because I think that's a much bigger problem in the U.S. anyway, is that your employer wants to know, oh, why are you taking a personal day? None of your business. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking a personal day because I need a personal day. Literally none of your business. I'm taking PTO because I need the day off. Literally none of your business. Also, Jacob, Mauer, Jake, you're the man. I love it. I love you. A hundred dollars to the ACLU. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Thanks for fighting the rights of our own bodily autonomy and in 2022. This is a, a general question I want to, which is going to be a pessimistic, sad question, to be honest with you. What do you think the temperature is of the United States where we'll actually be able to undo some of the damage that was just done, right? It's, it's scary because this happened really, really fast. And it's been, a, you know, it's we have these rights for a, a decent chunk of time. And I'm wondering if this is going to be something that there can be immediate action or are we in it for like the, a long slog of having to, to fight back against these people who actually don't view us as whole human beings. So. So I'd actually like to jump in on that. Um, speaking from a legislative perspective and uh, a national policy perspective, there are actually measures that Congress can take. There are measures that the president can take that can address this issue. I think it's been very well highlighted that this specific uh, version of the Supreme Court is a, a very um, minute amount of, of, of ideology in America as a whole. So yeah. the idea that we should be taking this a little bit more seriously and working on things like a law, something that actually codifies the fact that your right to privacy is your right to privacy, those things are underway. Now, I know everybody's going to say, well, what about the filibuster? Well, the filibuster can be overcome. It actually can. But that's going to take all of us reaching out to our senators, to our representatives, all of these people and saying, look, this is what I want. I am your constituent and you are here to vote for me, not for your own political views. That is something that we have to get used to doing. There are uh, measures that the president can also take to ensure that this moves forward. However, I would say that it is likely he will wait until all exhausted resources have been thrown into the congressional effort as to not upset the balance of the distribution of power in the United States, which honestly, kind of a smart thing to do, right? We don't want to get rid of the ideas that we have in terms of, of you know, sharing power across government agencies. However, I think uh, a lot of people are coming out and saying, you know, maybe we need more people in the Supreme Court. Maybe we need term limits term limits for everybody. Um, you know, all of these things. So there, there are a lot of options out there from a legislative and policy perspective, but um, get involved. Take that rage and turn it into action like Chloe said before. Please go ahead. So, oh, please go ahead. Oh, Chloe. oh I was just going to say pack the court. Pack the yes. court. Um, <laughs> <I agree. laughs> um, another thing to be aware of, there are some actual Congress people that are having conversations about having a national strike. So keep an eye on that. And that would happen. Yes, yeah. We need to go full blown Mexican women strike. We're literally yeah. in the country just are like, no, we're not doing anything. Nope. Um, so I think they use the copy of Iceland. I think it was Iceland that they're using this base off. So Iceland was trying to do something and a bunch of people suddenly went on strike in the middle of a work day and they realized 
oh, wow, our economy is going to drop if we don't fix this. So I can see that as a potential situation, but it's us having to acknowledge that we have to not be fearful of when we step out. Yes. We have to, when it comes to the strike, every single person counts. So anyone who's afraid, you have to go and, you know, hold their hand if you need to, but every single person will count if a strike occurs. So be there. And I like that what Chloe was highlighting too, that there is something that literally every single person can do. Every single person has a piece of this and every person can advocate and help change and make us a better society. This isn't something, again, it's just not about donations or sometimes some people can't, you've got a bunch of kids, you can't donate your time all the time. I, but there are small things that every single person can do to help improve the situation that we've unfortunately found ourselves in right now. Um, speaking so of- I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in for oh. just a second. Oh wait, unless it's a donation announcement, in which case we're totally taking that. No, we are here to bake at the end of the day. So we should talk about baking at some point. So. <laughs> well, my, my electric oven, the slowest preheat in the history of preheats is finally ready. So I'm going to open up the oven. It's going to be a little bit smoky because the butter was all like and grindy, right? Okay. So now I have got this whew, big, beautiful, hot beast. And it's like black and dark and, and mysterious in here, much like my soul. Um, but it's good. It's just the butter. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our mixed floofiness and we're going to just slide it in here oh yeah hear it it's already cooking mm, love it i'm going to take my lovely savory and thyme and just sprinkle it just a little bit of sprinkle 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 then i'm going to take the gruyere because gruyere is honestly like the best cheese isn't it i mean it goes on everything yes perfect. it's my favorite cheese it's it's brilliant so we're just gonna sprinkle 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 all the damn cheese yeah all of it okay um and artichokes which i absolutely love i went ahead and quartered them the artichoke hearts while you guys were chatting um, i didn't think you would mind i imagined that you know it was some of the members of the supreme court it was great uh so i'm going to drop those in here and then oh kalamata ob uh, olives I, I did just they're my favorite they're absolutely wonderful so all of this that i'm putting in here is kind of like a very uh, provincial style uh, taste and it's going to be delightful. Oh yeah. Oh, that's really hot. Now do not touch, do not touch. No, do not touch your cast iron skillet. So I don't know if you can see this, but oh yeah, it looks great. We're going to throw it back in the oven. And we're going to set a timer for 20 minutes to check on it. We might add Maybe, maybe we might add another five to six minutes, but we'll have a look at it and see how it's cooking. All right, hit it. All right. And so we also have a guest waiting in our wings who's going to talk about being a really good ally and why this is a um, issue that affects everyone. Um, so this is the first time we've ever done pop in guests at Unicorn Chef. This is a little bit of a new thing for me. So thank you, everyone, for your patience. I'm going to, does anyone, do either of you have somewhere you need to be so I can pop you out and pop? How are you? I, I I would love to go to sleep finally and dream of rights given back yes. and that this was just a nightmare. Right. I'm going to pass the mic to both of you so you can say, so Chris can say a goodbye. We'll have Chloe say a goodbye and then we'll bring Eric in. And before you say your goodbyes, I just want to thank you both so much for joining us short, short notice. And I, I really appreciate it. And it was great to meet both of you and have you be such good allies. So thank you. Um, so, Chris, if you want to say goodbye to everyone. It has been a pleasure, everyone. Um, I am learning to cook something new. Uh, so that's fantastic. Something that uh, will not take up a whole bunch of time. Um, and uh, this is a very, very important issue, like what has been repeated over and over again. It affects us all in many different ways, the different cases uh, that uh, Justice Thomas put in that should be reviewed. Yes. Um, the fact that um, the American people, the majority of the American people are not very pleased with what is going on right now with the loss of reproductive rights, body autonomy, loss of the EPA, um, all of these things. And it's going to get worse because it looks like they might make another ruling on something else tomorrow. Uh, so... Um, 
I will bid adieu and hope that uh, when I wake up tomorrow, it was all a bad dream. But since that's not the reality, uh, I will wake up tomorrow and be more invigorated and channel my anger into a positive way to try to get those rights back because it's 2022, not 1922. Amen to that. And thank you again. And we'll see you soon. Have a good, have a good night's sleep. Thank you. Cheers. And Chloe, did you want to say goodbye to our guests? I mean, she just killed it. Like, I don't know <laughs> what to say now. Like, Chris, go back at you. She just killed it. Um, just, you know, everyone, just know you're not alone. And, you know, in even in the darkest times, look for the light. There's always something there to be grateful for. And, for example, your rights might have been taken. And it's going to be okay because there's a lot of people that are really angry, just like you are. And, you know, don't let fear over, like take over you instead, take whatever energy that you have. If you need to grieve, then you can grieve. But the next day you roll up your sleeves and you get out there. Change does not happen when we sit down. Change happens when we move. So don't forget that. And thank you all for having me here. This is fun. Awesome. And again, Chloe's uh, organization she wanted to highlight tonight was Access uh, Reproductive Justice, Actually, Access Reproduction Justice. And we also put a link to this wonderful resource that she shared, which is a PDF of all the different resources. So thank you, Chloe. It was great meeting you. And thank you for your patience with my hosting skills. I oh, no, it was great. Thank so, you. All right. Bye, night. everyone. Thank you. And we're going to- Before we move on, I just want to take a minute because like Please. for the last, I don't know, like the last five- maybe 20, I don't know, how long ago would we been out? 47 minutes, for the last 47 minutes. I've been hearing Caitlin talk about how she's like, she's like, I'm so new to this. My hosting skills suck. You're doing a great job. You're Thank doing you. an absolutely phenomenal job. This was literally, like she said before, thrown together in like 20 minutes and reaching out to people and you adapted so well and you're making this happen. And I'm so, I like, I'm proud of you and it's amazing oh, and I love it and I'm really I, I just want to say thank you for being able to go with the flow and make this happen as quickly as we've made it happen you're doing an amazing job so stop apologizing you've done amazing work so Keenan leveraged basically all of her social contacts which are quite extensive if she had a Rolodex it'd be like five of them uh to get our guests and so I just want to say thank you for that and also shout out to Bryson for letting us use his platform where this wasn't even like a second thought for him he was like hell yeah go do it so, Absolutely. all right, Thanks, and Brian. I'm going to bring in our next guest, who is also a really good friend of Keenan and a great friend of us at Unicorn Chef, uh, Eric Bellardo. Did I get it? Did I get it right? I'll see when I bring him on. All right, bringing him in. Hey, Eric, how are you? How are you doing? Very good. Did I get it? Is it Eric Bellardo? Did I get it right? Yes, oh, 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 I got another massive donation in. Matthew. Oh my God, Matthew, this is great. AKA Matthew Grumpy Vigilante passed his prime on Twitter, $525 to, to, okay, that's not on here. Oh, Access Reproductive Services. Awesome. Okay. And for that. Oh, Hi. Awesome. I love this. There you go. You are Thank good. Thank you, Matthew, for the wonderful donation. <laughs> You're good. I like it. So wonderful. We're well over $2,000 and that doesn't even include our match. So that's excellent. Um, and keep the donations coming. We're super, super happy to have every dollar or even if it's just your time or awareness or sharing something through your social media platform. Um, so Eric, please stop, t tell us a little bit about who you are and why you're here tonight and why this is important to you. Well, number one, you know, I think some of your viewers know me. I'm Eric Lardo. I am the founder and executive director for Raices Cyber. And Keenan's one of our board members for Raices Cyber. So, so, you know, this is really important because this is something we fight and we fight this together. And we need to be to understand that taking rights away or having the choice for you as a woman, for reproductive rights, for any of these rights, it is important because it is it is a very slippery slope that we find ourselves with all these different rights that are being taken away. But the most important part is the right to be able to 
make decisions for yourself. Yes. Look at that. Look at that. What just pointing? <laughs> One point when you said you were sprinkling the cheese, you weren't sprinkling. You were pouring. I mean, you don't you sprinkle cheese. You, you don't sprinkle cheese. Yeah. You dump cheese. Cheese is everything. Sorry. You go dump. ahead. Okay. So it's very important that that we all get together and support each other because one of the biggest things that's happened in this country in the last five to seven years here is we've been separated. We've been dividing and this country is standing the most divided and it scares me and scares me for, you know, my sisters, my, my daughter, my, you know, it, I, I heard it said the other day that my grandmother has more rights in this or had more rights in this country than my daughter does not right, right now. I would agree with that. I think that's, that's a very scary but true thing. That's ridiculous. Yep. That's that's just ludicrous. Yep. And so why are we here? Because we need to support each other. Because we need to form a united front. It's not about, you know, pro you know, life like they say or pro abortion. It's a pro choice thing. It's a it's it's a, a the a, the human right and human ability to make decisions over your own country, of your own body, period. And your own, no your own life, your love life, your every decision that you have to make, privacy is fundamental to that. And privacy is what's being attacked here and continuously with all of these decisions that are gonna continue to come out, that have come out over the last couple of days. And you guys made a point of, Yes, these other all, all these companies saying yes, we will pay for moving and doing and doing this and doing that. They didn't think through this no. because the privacy aspect of this, the HR aspect, and I said it in the chat, HR works for the company. Yes. Okay, let's remember that HR works for the company. Their first point is protect the company. And any HR person that's out there can tell me otherwise, but that's what it is. That's, okay. I mean, they, it's not just a saying like HR, their client is the business, yeah, right? Is. That's, that's their sure. client. That's who they're, that's who they're paying, who they're paid. You know. Right. Their, their so when you that. think about that and you think about the laws and the privacy laws, and we, we can go down the rabbit hole with health privacy, HR privacy, and all these other laws. But the reality is when and unfortunately in my life i've been part of decisions for for choice you know in in a, in these type of situations and that's a decision that you don't go to your boss you don't go to your company you won't go to that it is incredibly private and i cannot imagine how any woman or any couple for that for that matter, will go to their company and say, I'm making this decision. Can you give me some money? That I don't know how that that's going to work. I mean, it's a good thought. <laughs> it's a good thought that they can support. But how are they going to do that? That's the part that I don't think was thought through when they were said. And yeah, it could be a good, you know, good thought, good PR, good, you know, good feel good thing, but it's going to be hard to implement. And it, like you said, this decision or this issue impacts all of us, impacts the company, impacts the financials, impacts, but it, but it just goes down to that person, to that woman that's making that, pro that, that decision, that couple that's making the decision, or like you guys said, that health decision somebody could be in trouble i will just be very clear my wife on our last baby her blood pressure dropped so much that she uh, she passed out while she was giving birth oh no Thanks. and they told her if you carry another baby you could die so we made the decision to, you know, I got we cut, she got to cut. cut off after 55 children, cyber papa. 
eight. We got eight. <laughs> so yeah. So it was time. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so but yeah, but that's you know, you uh, you've heard of these these cases where somebody is having an ectopic pr pregnancy or they have they have, you know, health problems. They have they're going to be treated for cancer and they might have to do a curatage, you know, to 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 make sure that they can proceed to cancer treatment. If you're in one of these states, you're not going to be able to get your cancer treatment if you're pregnant at the time that you find out that you have cancer. You know, you know there's what? no I want to I want to debate a little bit with you and it's not really a debate cuz I know you agree with me, but you know what's interesting about this and everything you say is, is of course spot on, but What's interesting about this is the focus is everybody keeps saying, well, what about these outside instances? What about these outside, you know, what about rape? What about incest? What about just a woman making a choice about her body? You don't actually see men having their entire lives changed because of one decision, like to have a baby or not to have a baby because they can walk away from it. Right. You know, it's not something that affects them physically, emotionally, mentally. It's not something that they have to deal with for the long term. If I'm going to turn this around. What if the law was that every guy, by, because of the law, had to get a vasectomy? Yes. If we turn this around to the guy, you really think that or, you know, I'm trying to use this as a body thing. Right. Because I saw I saw Caitlin go. Hmm. Um, well, but, but the point they, is that they they made it all right. that, like you can't touch, don't touch my wiener. Don't touch my wiener. It's my wiener and I will do what I want with my wiener, but we're I, not I, having that. conversation. I will say, I think that personally, I don't think I understand why that's an easy analogy and I know we're on the same side, but I personally don't think that like a uh, forced sterilization analogy is like helpful because we do actually have a history of forced sterilization in our country and other countries throughout the world. And it was used to impact minority people. The point, people. forget yeah, the, I, get the, I get the point. Yeah. Forget the sterilization. The yeah. point was, if you make a law affecting men, how would that play in this country? Meaning, okay, that it, it's the same thing. You know, it's about body control, the yes. control of the body, the control, your ability. It's not just about choose. control of the body. It's about control of a minority, what is perceived as a minority of people who have traditionally been able to be controlled via laws and via the church and via all of these things. And now we're at a time in history where we can say, no, 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 no. That's not how this works. We, as women, are standing up. We, as the LGBTQ community, are standing up. That we each have rights that women and men, we all have privacy rights to do what we want with our lives and our bodies. If I make a choice medically about my body, whether it's uh, having to do with reproductive rights or not, if I make a choice about who I choose to love, if I make a choice about who I choose to marry and adopt children with, if I can't have children, those are my choices, mine and my partner's. And that is what we're losing here. That is what we're giving up fundamentally. And that's what we're like I said at the beginning, it's a slippery slope. If you look at what's going on and what the statements that have been placed, you know, yep, check it. It's not going to burn. Um, you know, you look at the, you look at the next targets of things and you just mentioned. Yes. The LGBT. Equal, equal equal marriage rights. You know, you look at all the different things that are kind of on the docket to be slashed. You know, we're going back. And the other part is, you know, we do a lot of stuff with geopolitical. So we look like crap to the rest of the world right yes. now. We look like we're going, we're backsliding so much in a country that used to be the but shining to be fair, we, have, we have looked like that for the last couple of years. And this is just like the icing on the cake of, of chaos. And what you said before I came in, um, bring in Tatiana. Go ahead. Bring her. Bring her in. I like this. I like that we're having a really robust like discussion about this issue and how to talk about it. And it makes me really happy. 
because I think it's really important that people know how to talk about it and can actually engage in conversations with people who don't necessarily think the same way and are armed with like logic and reason and empathy and empathy and can talk about these different situations. So that's, that's why I'm saying bring Tatiana <laughs> because we have talked about the logic of the people. And that's a problem we have in this country that people do not listen to logic, science, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's becoming an issue where you have a thought and it doesn't matter if you get proven, you have proof. You can have yeah. proof in front of you. It's becoming such a unmovable rock that it, it's impossible to debate. So what we have to do is we have to stand up for the rights. It's not just this, the rights of the people. Um, it's also the right for all of us to be able to do something. Did I lock? You did, but you locked in a really flattering yeah, yeah. place yeah. where you look like a radio host, actually, and we got you like at a still. It's like, it's a really not, it's not bad. <laughs> it looks pretty good, actually. You could stay like this and we'd be like, no, this is just, this is just Eric phoning in from his radio studio. <laughs> yeah, well, my mom wants to pop in. Hold on, come in, my mom. Yes, mama. This is my hi, mother. Mama. Cat. Hello. Hi, hi. So I'm listening to you guys and I, as you can see from my, the color of my hair, I'm older and I want to thank you for expanding the discussion on women's reproductive rights to the issue that it is, which is the sliding slope, as you just said, um, to the erosion of rights and freedom and privacy for all. And thank you for articulating it and putting it together in a way that we all need to understand that this is not going away. It threatens so many of our liberties and we need to do something and thank you for doing something. Oh, I love you, Mom. All right. Thanks yes. for that. Mama. That's my mom. Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh no. Hugs. I love you. I love you. Yes. Uh, Did I order a drink? Yes, you are. Yes. Go. Get your wine. Get your wine. <laughs> oh, All right. All right. How's, how's the cooking going? Yes, going good. So um, that's a great point. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out so you can just see what it looks like. It's not as floofy as I would like it yet, but we've got a couple more minutes before full floofiness, you know, is on. But it smells delicious. It smells delish. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that. It looks like a deep dish. Oh, it's perfect. It's starting to get a little bit crispy on the edges from the butter. Oh my God. So like maybe five-ish more minutes, we're going to let it go. And, um, oh my God, I, I can't wait. So will that keep, if I, if I get in the car right now and drive down from Philadelphia? No, no, no. I told everybody earlier, I made one yesterday to check the status of my oven and I ate it before the night was over. It's so good. It's comfort food. And I think that's what the nation needs right now is comfort food. Comfort it food. Is, wow. Okay. We've got some work to do. And it's time to get to it. But, you know, I mean, comfort food is everything. Cheese is everything. Let's do that, too. Cheese is everything. Cheese is life. Let's just be realistic. The only time I want to hear people talk about pro-life is if they're talking about pro-cheese. That's like the only. We should just <laughs> rebrand it. And that's that's what it will be. So <laughs> much more palatable. So thank you, Ron, for joining. And thank you um, uh, just for being here to support this cause. I, I know a lot of people in the chat are starting to come in and out. Just thank you so much for supporting this, for blasting it on social media, for letting everybody know. And thanks for being a part of the discussion, because this yes. is what we need to be doing. And, you know, I posted on my Twitter that right now, if you're not supporting somebody in your life, you're doing it wrong. Yes. You're doing it wrong. Okay. Regardless of how you feel, support somebody, support somebody, be an ally, be an ally, support the, uh, support the people that support you. And the more we are aligned to each other, the more we will have the strength to get through this really trying time in our, in our history here. Okay. And you guys were talking, how long will it be? Is it going to be a slog? Is it going to be, you know, fast? Yeah. I think it's going to be a slog. I think it's I mean, going to be a generational slog. 
And yes, we can do things to patch things. You've seen already that some courts have stopped the immediate uh, laws to go into effect into some areas. But doctors are sitting there going, what do I do? Yes. I mean, I've seen 15 messages today where a doctor, and my son's a doctor, or he's an MS4, he's almost there. <laughs> and he's telling me that somebody will come in with something that happens at the emergency room and needs either an emergency procedure or something like that. And the doctors are spending more time talking to the lawyers, trying to figure out what to do. You know, I, I'm so glad you brought this up because I was talking to a friend of mine who's a urologist here in the Northern Virginia area, and they're having problems right now with medications that they would normally prescribe to women for urology issues that possibly would complicate a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And they are wondering what happens if she has, an, uh, you know, if she has a, a spontaneous abortion, if she yeah. has a miscarriage while she's on that medication. Am I going to be held liable for it? So the broader implications of this are just massive and really not well thought out by this report. Kaylin, bringing in Tatiana. Bring her in. She's not in the waiting room. She's got, she's, she's got to get in the waiting room. I know. Tatiana! So Tatiana is going to come talk about what else is happening in terms of privacy legislation. I would love that all of the other things that we can do to get ahead of this, all of the other laws, the HIPAA, uh, the medical process that can be used to fight this particular fight. And I'm, I'm going to bring up, and I'm going to bring up some point, uh, a point. He, us as security, and a lot of us are in the security, cybersecurity world, okay? We have some special skills. Yes. Okay, that we can help other people. We can help people with their privacy, we have to be able to reach out to people and explain to them how their data could be used against them. And that's important. That's something we can do as allies, as supporters, not just with the donation to, to these areas, but create something to help people understand these. Oh, wow. Look at that. It, it, understand that you know, like they say, the different tracking apps out there and how to use them and how to protect yourself because, you know, that data is, is, is going to be able to be used by law enforcement agencies to say, wait, hold on. Your period was good, good, good. And now it's not. And then it's good again. What happened here? You know, things like that, where something is there. Um, it could be used against you. That's 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 ridiculous that we're gotten to that point where we need to teach people how to protect themselves and how to be more safe with their data. The sad thing to me is that I think um, we were discussing this kind of in the waiting room before the show is as we watch the different Supreme Court um, justices get nominated under the Trump administration. This was the logical output of that you could see it coming yeah. and that's one of the things that's really sad to me is that i wish i would have done more before because we, we all knew this was going to happen when they when they nominated a couple of the different justices that this is what they were going for and oh, wait. they said no they said they weren't going to do this politicians and yeah they're honest people i think i, I actually view if you're on the supreme court that you are kind of assembled you're next you're akin to a politician it's a very similar thing and these people are actually in they're enacting a very specific political agenda in my opinion, and religious agenda. So I think that they were they were obviously lying. They've been proven to be lying now. Um, and so I'm just curious to particularly with Tatiana coming on, what can we do to kind of get ahead of some of this other leg incoming legislation, some of these kind of different really fringe opinions being forced upon us as a country? So definitely, definitely. Look at her. I think she left to eat. What do you think? One of my favorite things is you <laughs> have a beautiful creation and she's holding it up and I'm like, yes. Oh, I love it. Wait a second. There was a bigger piece on this side. What happened? You're muted. You. It's really, actually, it's really big to have people eat on camera. It's There's like a whole like industry. Eat away. It's not, this is not a, this is not a work meeting. 
unmute, eat your olives, eat your, have, have a nice time, you know? You're muted. Well, shit. <laughs> the combination of these things, the olives and the artichokes and the savory uh, as an herb, if you're not using savory in cooking, oh my God, you're, you're missing all of the things. And then that just light eggy feel. It's like a really light version of a pizza. And it's, oh, I love it. What kind of fat did you use? Did you use butter or what did you use? Oh, uh, yeah, butter, 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 real butter, non salted butter. I Good. like it. I love butter. Who doesn't? Butter for the win. Cheese so Scott says if Brad Pitt can eat on camera, so can we. All right? Mm, 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 mm. Definitely. So I'm going to let it cool for a second because it's a little bit toasty, but. Then this is totally going in my my pie hole. Oh my god! I love it. Amazing. Will you, will you show what's in the pan to the audience again? Because it's so beautiful. Yes, definitely. Get my knives out of the way. Ooh, tasty, tasty. Is it cheese? Oh, I love it. Oh, it the cheese? crust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that require a <laughs> to the chef? Now this baby, this baby went to full term and your baby at home might go even a little bit bigger. So with a Dutch baby, it's possible that it will go over the edges and floof out really, really poofy. It's also possible that it could drip on the bottom. So sometimes in, if you're making these um, and maybe it's your first time, put a pan underneath the, the, um, the cast iron skillet so that if it does run over, you don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning out the stove, but it's delightful and delicious. And thank you guys so much. And one of the things I wanted to bring up as the baby comes out of the oven, um, again, by choice, because we wanted it to. Um, so <laughs> is that right now, so we were going to match $1,500 of funds. We have roughly $2,300 total in donations. So plus the $1,500 that's um, from me, Keenan and my mom, the match. Um, is we've got $3,800 raised for a host of different charities right now. Um, and we just want to thank everyone who donated and also kind of educated some of the people who are here and introduced their charities to everyone. Cause that, that's really, really important too, actually is introducing people to different charities that they can give to and continue to give to as again, this is going to be a long slog. So, well then let me introduce the one that I donated to. Yes, please. And that is the abortion liberation fund of Pennsylvania. And it take and it's a volunteer run collective um, housed under the ALF PA, and it's a group of healthcare providers, organizers, and doulas that work within the southeast uh, Pennsylvania area. Um, so uh, their their website is abortionfundpa.org. So they're a local local organization that takes care of minorities and a lot of the areas there. So good organization that is uh, here local to PA. Awesome. And thank you for highlighting that. We really wanted to make sure we were highlighting local charities too. And that, that was really important to us because this is a grassroots movement and it needs to, it's important that it's like that. So I'm going to throw the, on the private chat so you can use it. Oh, it's really hot. It's hot. What are we going to do with her? I wouldn't wait for that to cool down either. I would eat it right away. I can't blame her. It's a it's choice. It. Mm, worth it. This is my choice to do this to myself. Hey, let's get and that. There you go. <laughs> so here's one of my questions as we kind of like wind down a little bit for the evening. Um, for Eric, if you were with some a group of men, and you kind of touched on this in a more eloquent way, but I'm curious how you'd boil it down. If you were with a man who was like, I don't agree that I have any position. I don't have any place in this debate. I don't have a, a dog in this fight, a horse in the race, whatever kind of, I don't know, football analogy they want to fucking say there. But what would you, what would you say to someone if they didn't, didn't think this was applicable to them? If it was a man. Depends. Depends on the type of man. And that's very yeah. important to know because it's what's going to what's going to resonate with that person you know it you know what would happen if this was your daughter or what would happen if this was your wife or you know and some men 
And I think Keenan and I talked about this yesterday. And I said, what, what's going to happen if this was your mistress? I like that. I do like that argument. I'm not going to, I've always liked that argument. Yeah. You, you know, know, I'm going to dive in here because I'm also on the board for safeescape.org, which is about domestic violence. And this is something that we're going to see in the coming months is that the rates of domestic violence are going to go up because men do not like to be told that their mistress or their girlfriend or whomever they're with can't get rid of a baby. We're going to see people who are abusers become more involved in being exactly. abused because of this decision. And that's not okay. So going back to your question is how, how would I talk to them is I would bring some, some, some way of getting through to them that yes, that this is not your decision. That's your partner's decision, but this is a choice. This is about taking away their right to choose. You know, some people you got to say, look, Guns have more rights than women right now. Yes, sadly. Okay. And I hate that, but uh, it's, I am going to say that. Um, but it's, organizations, the tech companies that we work for have more rights than we do right now. There you go. So it's about trying to make it clear to that person, that man, that, that partner, that, you know, it's just not fair. At the bottom line, it's just not fair. And how do I make it clear to you to be an ally? Because how would you feel, Mr. Gun-toting person? And, you know, I like guns. I don't have a problem. I'm a former military. It's, but people fight about, you know, my gun rights. I want to have a gun. Well, that's your choice to have a gun. You're and not giving the women the choice. Your it doesn't live inside your body for nine months and then require you to take care of it for 18 to 60 years of your time and love and effort. It doesn't fundamentally change your life Correct. in the way that a baby does. Correct. And I've got eight. So yeah, kind of know. I know you as the expert on, on children yeah. and, and all and, the babies. And at 18, they still are here. What are you talking about? They're, they're over here. So, I got 23 year old over there. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, ladies. Well, what you're doing is wonderful. The food looks amazing and let's keep up the fight. Know that you have an ally here and I will stand by you at any point in time. So thank you very much for having me here tonight and thank we'll you, see you soon. Thank you for being an ally of the show and of women. We appreciate you, Eric. Thank you so much for coming on short notice and highlighting your charity. Again, uh, Eric's charity is abortionfundpa.org, correct? Correct. And thank if you want to donate, uh, that's a great charity. And thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Claps. Oh, claps. <laughs> I got to do it. I got to do it. We want to make sure it's manual here. <laughs> This is, I'm happy with this so far. This has gone okay. I think this is, this is a great new model of, you know, fundraising efforts and support. And I'm so happy that, you know, Bryson was like, do it, just do it, yes. go have fun and, and make money and raise awareness for this cause. And I think it's just really amazing. You've done such a great job of organizing everything. You, know, you have to, you have to, I, like, this is, I this like, is I messaged yeah. her, I was like, what if we did something crazy? And I was like, I might have actually already done something crazy and invited everybody. And can we handle that? And she's like, yeah, we can handle that. So just, Caitlin, you're doing a great job. And thank you and so much. Thank you for baking. Did you show us show us the, the Dutch Jane, Jane Doe's baby one more time? The beautiful. Oh, Jane Doe's baby is beautiful. She's beautiful, OK? She's perfectly crisp. She's soft, a little bit eggy, not doughy, but eggy. Mm. Super savory with the thyme and the savory and the Kalmata olives and um, just everything, the Gruyere, oh my gosh, crispy. Excuse me, I'm still eating it. Crispy Gruyere is delightful. And oh God, it's just beautiful. Hold this on, I, really I have to grab my fireball. I got fireball, but I was like, I can't have it when I have these guests on because then I'm gonna embarrass myself. So I'm gonna have it at the end as my oh celebration. Gosh, that's so. just bullshit this is the unicorn chef this is what we do we drink and we cook and we eat no and we is... make parodies cheers baby. 
to Jane Roe's baby and her right to choose whether or not she had that baby. Cheers. Cheers to that, very eloquently said. Also to abortion on demand and without apology. On demand and without apology. It's great, you know, obviously there's multiple different kind of reasons that people need them, but again, on demand without an apology, you shouldn't need to have a reason. You should be able to have complete rights over your body. So yep. thank you for everyone for joining us. Thank you for helping us raise roughly, roughly, we're going to post probably in the next day or two, $3,800 for a whole bunch of different charities and yes. also allowing us to highlight the different charities too. So hopefully you can donate again if that's something you can do. If you can't donate your money, donate your time, be a good advocate, be a good ally. There's so many different things that you can do. And thank you for joining us. So bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Have a good night.